so today I'm going to talk about very basic thing. Today we are, I'm going to talk on history taking, which is very, very prime important. And tomorrow we are, I'm going to talk on clinical exams, how we evaluate our patient. So there is no financial support and thank you for having me here again. Uh, coming to Dhaka is always a home coming for me. So thank you so much for having me again. So in the history taking, what we have to understand is, is today if any patient is snoring, means tomorrow he is going to be a sleep apnea. So today's snorer is tomorrow's sleep apnea because there will be a lot of neuromuscular, irreversible neuromuscular damage to our upper airway which will lead to a OSA. So if we think any patient is snoring today, we should take proper history. So in clinical evaluation of the patient with sleep apnea, the history taking is very, very, very important because we are trying to find all those things which are beyond the iceberg. Because what we see is a tip of the iceberg. Because number of the patient with the sleep apnea, what we see is a tip of the iceberg. But we have to pick the people what is beneath the iceberg. So history taking is very, very important. The proper history taking is very important because 15% of the patient with sleep apnea, they don't snore. But they have got other symptoms. And we have to identify the other symptoms in the history taking. That is very important. There, there may be the two types of the clients that come to our clinic. One of the clients who have got all the symptoms, it is very easy for them to take history. But there are other subgroup of the client who are very ignorant to recognize. She cannot sleep. Why are you treating me? So they are so ignorant about this. So we have to take a proper history. In those patients, if you try to convince or try to tell on the day one that you have problem, they will not take it. So normally what we do is that we give them a brochure to record at home. You go, you be a cool headed, you read the brochures, everything, and if you think that you have some problem with you, if you think you have some symptoms, then come back again, we'll discuss you. So peeling the onions is very, very important. So you have to discuss to your patient, you have to talk in a different time frame, so that they will be convinced, so that they will again come back to you for the treatment and evaluations. So, but sleep apnea, they doesn't come alone. They come with lot of comorbidities, or they come with lot of sleep disorders. So we have to identify this. So history taking is not only the history taking of sleep apnea, but the history taking of comorbidities also. And the history taking of other sleep related disorders. Because this sleep apnea is associated, 70% is associated nowadays with insomnia also. So history taking has to be detailed. So we need a proper performance because we cannot remember in our busy practice every day what we have to ask to our patient. So we should have this printed with us so that, we, so that we don't miss a single point. So what are the usual symptoms? We all know what are the usual symptoms. That is a snoring, apneic spell, choking and gasping at night. Sometimes you may ask to your patient, do you suddenly wake up in the night and don't recognize why we, you wake up? Some patients may give that history, they choke at night and wake up. So that is also very, very important. Second thing is that the patient is sleeping for 8 to 9 hours. He has already slept for 8 to 9 hours. Then also, it is very difficult for him to wake up in the morning. He wakes up in the morning, but doesn't become fresh. Unrefreshing. He has to take a lot of caffeine to become fresh. Or, when the patient is having morning headache. The patient has sleep for 8 to 9 hours, he is unrefreshing in the morning, he has got morning headaches and he has to take a lot of caffeine to make him awake. So these are the usual symptoms. And other usual symptoms are excessive daytime sleepiness. He is yawning every now here and there. He is yawning. Second thing is that sleepy while in reading, while in meeting. Sometimes I ask my patient, do you go to a movie theater and sleep there? If any patient says that, yes, doctor, my husband, he goes to a movie theater and sleeps there, means that patient is disease. Because anybody paying money and going to a theater and sleeps, that means he is disease. So 
which is which is our patient that see you have this problem because you are paying money going to a movie theater and then you are skipping right so he is sleep deprived and poor concentration at work he try to work but cannot work concentration on his work or his academic is going down other thing is a sleepy driving this is a worst scenario if any patient with a history of sleepy driving those has to be evaluated for us to get me because 70% of the road, long distance road traffic accident in United States is due to sleepy drivers. Here also we have a lot of accidents, but we don't know the cause of those accidents. Those could be a sleepy drivers. Unusual symptoms, see, you now there were the usual symptoms. But what are the unusual symptoms? The patients are suffering from the chronic tonsillitis. The patient will say, Doctor, I am having tonsillitis every now and then. I go to the pharmacy, I get some medications, I am better. But after again a month, I have a tonsillitis. But that tonsillitis is not due to infection, but due to a inflammation, due to a chronic vibration that is happening in his airway. That, that person goes to the doctors, doctors open up the mouth, sees his pharynx is congested, tonsil is congested, and diagnosed as a chronic tonsillitis. But the cause is not a infection, but due to the inflammation that is causing a chronic sore throat in the patient. Second thing is that frequent working up night for a maturation. So patient normally because of lot of hormonal changes that is happening in his body which causes a diagnosis. The important hormone is a artery attributed factor which causes a diagnosis. And that patient will go to a physician and physician what he will do is that he will tell okay, if you are having future maturation at night, you go to a sonologist, do your ultrasound of your prostate and that patient will be identified as a benign enlargement of the prostate. What cause is due to a sleep apnea. So in those cases, we should be talking to the patient. Unusual patient, 40, 45 years of the old patient, may be misdiagnosed as benign enlargement of the prostate, but instead he may be having sleep apnea. Third is that dementia, memory loss. The patient with sleep apnea, they will have a memory loss. They cannot identify the things where they kept last night or yesterday. And those patients may be misdiagnosed and treated as Alzheimer or dementia by a neuropsychiatrist. Other is a Decreased libido because lot of hormonal changes that happens in the person, so there is a decreased libido or sexual urge in the patient, and that patient may land up with the sexual urge or urologist for his treatment. But if you dig the history, that patient may be having a sleep apnea. Third is a psychiatrist because lot of things that is happening in the patient everyday life now a year and there, and he could not cope up with his calling. So the patient may be depressed and ultimately land up in the psychiatric training. So we should also talk to those patients in detail whether they, they have other symptoms of the sleep apnea or not. So since lot of the changes that happens in the patient's body when every day he is suffering from the sleep apnea causes a hypoventilation and lot of the chemical injury that is happening to the, his body may, to, may lead to a lot of diseases. You can name the diseases from foot to toe. The patient will be having to some extent. So, there may be the some unusual symptoms. The patient may visit to an ophthalmologist with all, all the symptoms, but the patient may be a sleep apnea. So normal sleep glaucoma is very, very closely associated with the severe sleep apnea. So any patient with a normal sleep glaucoma, we should counsel our ophthalmologist, please evaluate for a sleep apnea. Other thing is we know, the heart disease is very closely associated with the sleep apnea, up to 90%. So the patient who is with a cardiologist, the treatment with a, with a cardiologist, but despite after getting adequate treatment, if there is a poor disease control, those all the patients must be evaluated for a sleep apnea. In diabetes also, who early control diabetes, early onset of the diabetes, this has to be correlated or evaluated for a sleep apnea. So these are very unusual symptoms. And the stroke also, reflux disease also. So if we have Okay, if we have patient who are having diabetes, hypertension, reflux disease, which are poorly controlled despite adequate medications, then we have to think that these patient may be or must be evaluated for the sleep apnea. So, so one of the most important things is we still think that okay, the OSA patient has to be obvious. Their BMI must be high, but see. 25 to 30 percent of the patient with OSA they are non-obese. In non-obese patient also we have to reconsider sleep apnea because the ethnicity matters. 
So if the patient is coming from the Chinese race or Mongolian race, maybe the piano facial restriction causes an upper arrow airway narrowing. So we have to be for that. And then if the patient is from our listening, then obesity may contribute. But if any patient with a Mongolian dress comes to us, we should re-evaluate though he is not obese. Then we we normally after after proper history taking, then we try to screen out if the patient is sleep deprived or how bad his sleep apnea or we can screen out by a subjective questionnaire like Berlin questionnaire, straw bank questionnaire and by the Epoto scales. So we can pick up some patient without doing further investigation also because the sensitivity of this questionnaire are usually up to the 75 to 80 percent. So after in, the, in our office also we can screen those patients with simple questionnaires like straw bank and Berlin questionnaire. Another subset is a pediatric age group because the history of the pediatric patient is quite different from the adult patient. So in the pediatric patient, they give the, the parents they usually give the history. So there are some nighttime symptoms, there are some daytime symptoms. So nighttime symptoms in the pediatric age group is snoring loud enough more than three times a week. Okay? And the patient will and, and the patient parents will say, my child is very restless at night. They don't sleep in the usual position. Their neck is hyperextended and they have very, very much restless sleep at night. He breathes through his mouth. His mouth is always open, doctor. And he is having excessive night sweating. If any child comes with a history of excessive nighttime sweating, then we should reconsider of evaluating that child for a sleep apnea. Other thing is that nocturnal enuresis. Despite of the age, the child is six, seven years old and still he is using a diaper at night, means we have to reconsider that the child may be having a sleep apnea. So what are the daytime symptoms? The daytime symptoms, though the child has slept for 10 to 12 hours, it is very difficult for parents to wake up. The child may be very cranky in the morning. He may not be happy or he may not wake up with a smiling face. The child will be cranky. He, he cannot complain the morning headache, but he will express as a crankiness in a child. And the child usually sleep in unusual places like in the school bus or in the school or usually tired when he comes from the school. Then we should reconsider. But nowadays, what we see, the behavioral problem in the child. If the child he has got recent change in behavior, if the child is hyperactive, impulsive, irritable, mood swing, then we should reconsider evaluating all those child for a sleep apnea. So the symptoms in the child is quite different from the symptoms in the adult. So we have to always dig on the patient. So the patient may not primarily come as a snoring. The patient may come with a different symptoms like increase in maturation at night. So we should have to reconsider in those patients. So history taking is very, 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 very important to identify the patient with the sleep apnea. So thank you all. Enjoy your afternoon session.